This is exactly right. like podcasting <laughs> do you like podcasts and do you like podcasting it's fun well welcome then to my favorite murder the mini sode where it's basically your podcast we just tell it to you but we make it shorter than the other one yeah because it's not about us that's right <laughs> and and it's ours and Goodbye. yet and yet it's ours so don't try to take a fucking cut <laughs> are you ready for the first yes. email of my series of grandparents uh email <gasps> they all, i love it by by chance not on t- not intentionally by chance by purely by chance oh. okay the first one is don't trust anyone not even your own grandma 100 percent. hello all since we are now just talking about anything that might be funny (laughs) (laughs) that might be funny that's right and lessons on trust i thought i would take this time to tell you about my badass grandma bobby joe bobby Uh, joe it literally makes my eyes water with tears of people talking about their grandma bobby joe was my best friend and yes her name is actually bobby joe oklahoma (laughs) y'all people used to ask if she was upset that we didn't call her by a normal grandma name to which she would reply don't care if they call me shit as long as they call me something (laughs) oh my god my dad would say uh just don't call me late for dinner (laughs) classic don't i love it um i have a story that i will try to make short that illustrates why bobby is such a -A b-a-m-f Badass Badass motherfucker. motherfucker. I love it. And my total role model. When I was a small youth. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God, not a giantess youth. Small um, youth. When I was a small youth, uh, she took me to the park and tried to convince me to go down the slide, which might as well have been Mount Doom Mm. to my toddler self. Mm. She finally convinced convinced me it would be okay by standing at the bottom with a promise to catch me. Mm -hmm. With love and trust in my favorite person, I overcame my fear for her to step out of the way <laughs> I I overcame my fear only for her to step out of the way and let me eat an entire face full of dirt oh Bobby Joe after I stopped screaming Bobby dusted me off gave me my most important life lesson this is a lesson Regan <gasps> don't trust anyone not even your own grandma what the <laughs> fuck Bobby Joe <laughs> harsh but really applicable to everyday life is it's it? true it is you should trust your own grandma I it's feel true like. it keeps you on your toes she also taught me that we only get one shot at life and that we have to constantly be looking out for our f- star player which is ourselves I like it. I don't. At an early lesson, an early lesson of fuck politeness. <laughs> she shaped me into who I am and helps me SSDGM every day. Thanks, Regan. Regan. I honey, love it. Regan. I love sweetie it. baby angel. It's the best. She's right. She tr- like, amen. I'm not arguing with Bobby Joe, but in your lifetime, there's like going to be five people in like, let's say you live a hundred years that you should trust. <laughs> True. One of them, hopefully, is your grandparent. If not, that's okay. There will be other people who you should. And I, I'm see, I'm speaking from someone who trusts no one, not one person. Yeah, and it and it hurts and is not healthy. But I will say this, and yes, maybe a toddler might have been too young of an age for that lesson. <laughs> but I will say this: it that that eating a face full of dirt is going to happen at some point. And it's like Bobby Joe wanted to be there when it happened to her, so she could be like. All right, now pick yourself back up. That's how it goes. And I kind of like that. Is it pick yourself up or is it don't try ever again? No, no, no. It's it's just saying if you're going to do something, you can't expect people to stand there catching you and and doing a bunch of shit. Like, be self-sufficient. But they egged you on. Come yeah, on, she, come down the. Th- yeah. I, th- I guess I'm getting triggered a little because when I when my sweet baby nephew Joe was like a year and a half, I like was like, I'll take him to the park. It'll be great. And like I followed him around and like made sure everything was okay. Yeah. And he went over to this slide, which I now know was the big kid slide. Yeah. Didn't know, but he walked over to it like it was his thing, and he got on it and went down it. And this fucking sweet man, thank God, was at the bottom of the slide and like one handed scooped him up before he fell face for like <laughs> it was the big kids it was like the fight and i didn't know there was a difference between slides right and you were just kind of standing on the side like yeah. go well, for I walked, it i was walking behind him and he was like the, i'm gonna go down this and i'm like yay great yeah i didn't know and then halfway down i was like oh no he's veering right off of this slide <laughs> oh he went over the side he went over the side and this fucking lovely man thank <sighs> you thank you fucking jesus and like it was this like little group of parents 
and they were all looking at me in horror and I just went I'm the aunt <laughs> and, we and they're laughed. like uh-huh yeah, they, yep we left but then my sister was like it's really hard to break a kid yes thank god you know okay. their teeth go up from their lips all the way up <laughs> and they get new ones it's yeah that's crazy. right I also that happened to me one time I took Nora um to the park when she was two yeah. and she was an early walker talker so you would definitely trust her to like yeah. you're just like oh you know how don't to do, do this don't do stupid shit yeah <laughs> and she did this thing where she ran up this ramp uh -huh. and i was kind of walking next to her but i was far enough away where i was like just watching her walk up the ramp i was actually thinking of maybe taking a picture of her uh -huh. and she got to a certain point on the incline and just fell backwards <laughs> and Christ. i somehow moved <laughs> yeah yeah like six feet in an instant and caught her by the head One and hit. tilted her back oh, up shit. and then she just kept going She's like and goodbye she send was just like the end parents send us emails of stories of when you <laughs> almost killed your kid i know my mom dropped my brother in the very beginning mm -hmm. and he like send us stories of almost like new parents sending like almost killing your kid oh you mean like the time my mom tripped over my high chair and knocked it over <laughs> and i went down face first and it cut my head open that, that one and i still that's that scar right there holy shit and she thought she killed me yeah 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 send us those it's my turn oh also but also if it's um some kind of please do not veer into weird child abuse you know there's people who have been scarred for life because they work for america's funniest home videos and people send in things are like this is funny right we put our kid in a thing and oh, and no. it's, yeah so we don't want to hear things where your family interprets hitting kids in the face differently than other Jesus. people you know let's have some uh let's have some healthy parameters let's have some healthy accidents it's accidents that your parents would never want it's not a thing yes. where like we are going to teach or you like, a lesson by putting you that, in a hot car that your none, parents, none of that kind of stuff your parents did on accident like just those those funny stories of like oh i didn't know what parenting was like and then i did this thing and now i get it put that down let me read you a story it's my turn uh, i'm here for oh, you okay <laughs> you look like you're about to go again because i've talked so much okay <sighs> This is called, my friend was stabbed 22 times and my dad protected Timothy McVeigh. Whoa. Okay. MFM fam, long time listener, first time writer. Tipsy at a bachelor party last weekend, I finally had the nerve to ask my friend if he would mind if I wrote in to you all about his story. To my delight, he gave me the green light. Last summer, my friend Dan was living in a house with some friends in his college town in Oregon. He had two roommates with their very own Nope, with their own rooms and him and his girlfriend that was staying over where we're in his room. Okay, we get it. I don't have to read it correctly. Do you get it? <laughs> Do I get it? <laughs> One very early Tuesday morning, this crazy guy that I had a thing for Dan's then girlfriend attempted to set the house on fire with everyone in it. Uh oh. When the guy couldn't get the house uh, to set fire, thank you, Oregon Rain, he decided to break in grabbed the biggest knife he could find in the kitchen and began his attack. This psycho went from room to room attacking each of the roommates before Dan and his girlfriend were woken up by the commotion and ran into the hall to see what was going on. When they entered the hallway, they too were attacked. My friend said everyone was kind of frozen in shock, unsure what to do, but him being the badass he is began trying to fight this guy off. All in all, Dan was stabbed 22 times Fuck. and sent to the ICU. Luckily, he and all involved survived. Whoa. Wait, is, was this on an I survived? I'll let you finish. Maybe. Because that sounds really familiar. Excuse me. The piece of shit that attacked <clears throat> them had just been released from jail a day earlier on bond for robbery and drug charges. And then it says, seriously, what the fuck? Uh I wasn't sure which story to send since and since I knew and went to high school with Morgan Harrington, i.e. the murders of Hannah Graham and Morgan uh, Harrington by Jesse Matthew Jr. I don't know that one. And my family has a long list of federal agents and military officials. As a U.S. Marshal, my dad was once in charge of protecting Timothy McVeigh wow. at a safe house before his trial. Jesus. That's intense. According to dear old dad, McVeigh was a total military wannabe douche that kept a military type crew cut and always answered with yes and no, sir, as if there was some, as if he were some type of soldier. Mm. Can't wait to see y'all in Portland in October. <laughs> SSDGM Carrie. That that is so 20, scary but you can survive that you can survive it and he fought like he basically stopped and kept everyone else alive too he fought and and saved the day and also got stabbed 22, 22 times, times but like made it still that's just this right now me touching your hand 
I'm stabbing you one, two, three, four, five. Just a light fingernail. She's I don't even have a long whole, fingernail. She's using a kitchen knife. <laughs> I brought this from home. Move. Don't move. <laughs> Isn't she, that upsetting? Yeah, like 22. The repetition of it. That's what I always think of when I watch I Survived and people keep talking about like, and it ends up they were stabbed. You know, anything over but that's, four. That's, that's the like, worst part is, is like, there's also time between each. So it's like not one, two, three. Four. It's like one. Two, three, four. Fighting, fighting, rubbing down the hallway. Six, seven, eight. Nine. Punch, <sighs> kick. Yeah. 20 fucking two. That's nuts. Oh, yeah. Good job, all involved. I'm so glad you're still alive. Me. So, so now, on a lighter note, true love at the morgue. <clears throat> Dear Karen, Georgia, Fur Babies, and Steven, they got to do it. It's re- it's an act of rebellion now. I'm a relatively new murderer, you know. Yeah, we can tell. And I just joined the fan cult yesterday. Yay! Uh, she wrote that there, but then I acted it out with oh. my own passion. Great. I swear this podcast has changed my whole world. Yeah. With all the stress and anxiety I face on a daily basis, I can always turn to this podcast for sometimes creepy but hilarious relief. For so more thank stress you. and anxiety. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're welcome. But a different kind. So it's a counterbalance. Yeah. So speaking of creepy and hilarious, I thought y'all would get a kick out of how my parents met. It was June 2nd, 1985 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. My mom, who is a registered nurse now, was working one of her first graveyard shifts at the hospital. My dad was an orderly at the same hospital. I already love this so much. Working to pay his way through college. It was around 1 a.m. when my dad was told to bring a deceased female body down to the morgue. According to the law... A male is not allowed to bring a dead female body <gasps> down to the morgue he's alone. Because gonna fuck her. Yeah, that's but that happened so much that they had to pass a law. Is that in the uh, in the rule? Because he's gonna fuck her. Uh, mm-hmm. No, your your Just exact me. quote. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Isn't that in, that's how much it happened that they had to pass a law Jesus like that. Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyway, that's good. At least it, Great. at least it got passed. Happy to hear it. Thinking thinking she was being hazed at her new job, my mother was told to accompany him on the what seemed like mile walk to the morgue. My dad could sense my mom's discomfort. Jesus. And began to try to crack jokes to make her oh, laugh. Oh, dad. As you dad can probably jokes. tell, this did not work. <laughs> Once they got into the morgue, my dad uh, try, again trying to be funny started to introduce the body to the other bodies in the oh morgue. My God. after this bit he turned around and my mother was gone <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, like if they had never talked again he would have just been this creepy fucking dude he would have been the creepiest the dude. absolute i um, the night i almost got killed yeah um after about two months of quote-unquote platonic breakfast dates and persistent flirting Aww. my mom dumped her loser boyfriend Yay. and went on an official date with my dad on august 26, 1985. Oh, 31 years know. later, they're still as happy as ever, and I couldn't be more blessed to have such awesome parents. So shout out to 86-year-old name redacted. Without your death to emphysema, my parents would have never met, and I wouldn't be here today. I hope you were happily resting in peace. Oh my God. Sexy, <laughs> Stay sexy, ladies, and remember that you can find love and friendship anywhere, literally. Love, Ariana. <laughs> the guy that they brought like, that makes me want to cry mm-hmm. like he like he lived a full life he was 80 60 died of emphysema he enjoyed, oh it was a lady she enjoyed smoking yeah a lot she lived it up and lived to 86 as 86? a smoker that's the thing about old, a lot of old-timer smokers like they live to be older than non-smokers hell yeah and they ate meat and drank whiskey every day and exactly. night and yeah. then and then as her final go fuck yourself she like unites this beautiful couple she's like how about you two get that's together all I want. i'm a ghost hanging over my that's all you want to do oh, with I your life like, i want my i want it to be a thing oh that's <laughs> be- I like that really makes me want to cry it's why i'm on the donor list it's like take my heart and like yes. run with it sure. don't run too like don't run but okay good night With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and 
and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Goodbye. This is called There's a Shitload of Skeletons Under My House. Uh oh. Here we go. It's, it starts Let's talk about some bones. <laughs> My name is Sammy. I'm 28 and I live in Helena, Montana. MT is Montana. Yes, it is. And I think it's Helena. Helena, Montana. Great. <laughs> I bought my house just after my 22nd birthday, which is clearly a Montana thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, it costs $20. <laughs> I bought my house. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the neighborhood in which I live was built on an old cemetery. That information by itself probably isn't that weird, but in our, it is. But in our case, there's still around 1,600 bodies buried under our homes. Shit. So the, it was $20, that house. That's fucking right. <laughs> the cemetery was established in the mid 1800s by the Catholic Church. It was used until 1905 when the church opened what was then and still is called Resurrection Cemetery. Don't fucking name a cemetery I mean, that's Resurrection. Ask, that's asking for it, for sure. Yeah. It's called Ghost ha- Ghost Hauntings Cemetery. It's it's called Zombie Central yeah. Cemetery. It's called Good Luck Sleeping, you fucking asshole <laughs> cemetery. It's called Walking Dead 3, <laughs> the Helena, Montana chapter. <laughs> um, it's about three miles north of my house. Naturally, the old grave sites fell into disrepair over the next 60 years. God, I love those places. I mean. Becoming overgrown, vandalized, and almost indistinguishable from the properties around it. Okay. I want to live near one of those. My friend Kate in Portland had like her, her view outside of her front window was just a fucking old cemetery. Ooh. It was like my dream. That's kind of amazing. Can you imagine going to get a glass of water in the middle of the night and just looking outside? I, you know, every once in a while I wake up, cause I wake up almost every night at 3 a.m. Like every once in a while I'll respond to a text of yours if yeah. you send it at 11.30. Mine is 5 a.m. I've already, I've always felt, already fallen asleep. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll get a glass of water. And my, I live on a dead end street. Like, it's kind of far away. It's not near yeah. much. Give Several the ad- times. Give them the address so they can right. <laughs> Google it. Google map this. Every once in a while, I'll go, I'll just kind of step out to the front room just because I'm like just walking around with mm-hmm. a glass of water and there's just somebody standing in front of my house. Oh, shit. I just scared the <laughs> shit out of Elvis. I apologize. And he's pissed. What the fuck? It's happened twice Sorry. where one time it was a, like it looked like a young person walking away but it was I was like just standing there going like it's three in the morning. What are you doing? And then one guy it was it just was a guy standing there. Do you like memorize what they're wearing in case the cops need to hear from you? You know what I do is I trust that George yeah, she senses if, if she's it's a not problem. barking. There's it, yeah. everything's fine. She's still asleep, so I'm like, uh, I'm gonna trust this is fine. I just scared the ever loving shit out of Elvis. <laughs> Elvis is settling back into his spot right now, going like, meow, 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 don't meow. fucking touch me again. Okay. So mad. Let me finish this, please. They didn't tell him. Okay, all right, here we go. It's 1969. A local high school booster club took it on a quote catholic cemetery took on the catholic cemetery as a project and just <laughs> fucking removed all the headstones no. and hauled them off according to one of my neighbors we're gonna clean this place up. this is our new project let's losing dead bodies just get rid of <laughs> anyone who mattered to anyone <laughs> they didn't tell anyone where they were taking them real shysty like and then turned the cemetery into a neighborhood park Fucking 69. This is the plot of Poltergeist, by the way. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> the swimming pool. Uh, da, 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 da. Apparently, they contacted family members of those with Mark Graves, advising them to relocate their loved ones' remains, but less than 5% of them even responded because they're like, hey, this is Sarah from the Booster Club. Do you have a truck to move your right. great grandpa's body? Remove your great grandpa's body. <laughs> 
<laughs> or make sense. suffer the consequences. How is that my job? Yeah. How is that my job 96 years later? And I love it. Like, Booster Club, do something this year. And they're like, we're going to move all the graves and make everything haunted. And give everybody a to-do list that's so macabre <laughs> yeah. and bizarre. And expensive. <laughs> and also then what, you're shopping for a new cemetery. Yeah, for a park in fucking, where is this, Montana, where there's parks <laughs> everywhere. All right. Great. So they just moved. So they just mowed over that shit and called it Robinson Park. Dang it. There's been lots of remains unearthed by backhoes and excavators during utility work since the 80s. I'll attach just a few of the articles available in the city's archives. Instagram, what's up? Including one about someone just stumbling upon all those headstones that were originally removed and dumped in a gravel pit in our North Valley. One of my favorites from 1991 quotes my neighbor, Richard, <laughs> Richard, saying that the cemetery residents are great neighbors whom he's never had any problems with. Oh, what's Richard. What's up, dad joke? Seriously. Love Richard's it. standing there with his hands on his well, hips. No, I've never had a problem. They've been so quiet. Oh, I love Richard. Um, bah, 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 bah. He goes on to mention that his son of the cemetery is where they buried children so there's Mm -mm. definitely babies buried on his property also that quote the park is an asset much better than a dirty old cemetery and i'm catholic and then it says um (laughs) what the fuck dick (laughs) (laughs) anyway the most recent skeleton was discovered on may 30th about four feet under the street next door by workers doing utility work for the brand new condos being built Mm. real quick i hate people but i can't fucking wait to casually tell the new residents while i'm (laughs) pretending to do something in my yard i'm worried dick is gonna beat me to the punch though (laughs) he will thanks for all the laughs sammy sammy i love you getting over your fear of people and hatred of people to tell them as you're doing bullshit yard work about their sammy sammy amen uh right now i'm writing a horror film um and it's a, it's a called haunted condo and you're the fucking s- star i mean can because can you imagine so they're building like a development on top of baby cemetery yeah. a, a disturbed baby cemetery and scary old richard next door is gonna like <laughs> is like the two of them are fucking dying to tell literally dying to tell <laughs> oh my god um i love okay, it here's all my... i wanted was in my like childhood was to be on top of a cemetery like not really but just to be something around interesting some, to have something happen. interesting and creepy yeah yes um okay well here's something similar okay this is called hair rollers and rigor mortis <laughs> hey karen georgia and co Yay. loving it you guys are the best Thank perfect you. start in your in one of your earlier podcasts you guys talked about being curious about rigor mortis <laughs> I am. And thought you might want my rigor mortis story that involves my grandma. Great. It's not a story about rigor mortis setting in on my grandma. Don't worry. This is her story she told me. So, okay. My grandma was a beautician in this tiny town outside Wichita, Kansas. Cute. We're doing full on Midwest hardcore grandma stories. Sure. Um, And she was super well liked in this tiny town. Everyone knew her and every lady went to her to get their hair done well one of her clients well well, one of her regular clients died natural causes all good the husband really wanted her hair to be set the same way as it always was uh so shampoo set motherfucker yeah so he asked my grandma to come to the funeral home to do her hair she agreed and went to the funeral home she was putting the hair rollers in her hair when all of a sudden the muscles start contracting and the body sits straight up from the table (laughs) <laughs> no. It took my grandma two seconds to run completely out of the funeral home. My dad always told me that she ran through a screen door, but my grandma never told me that. No, part. she did. She did. <laughs> she Holy. ran through an actual wall and it was the shape of her body. Exactly. Running. It was a cartoon. <clears throat> Oh my but God. Uh, but that story has always brought a smile to my face. I love to think that sweet Christian woman just trying to do hair <laughs> and a dead body sits up on her. But anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you for what you do. Oh. Stay sexy. Don't get murdered. Casey L. Oh that is my God. incredible. And I mean, talk about I would never stop screaming. I would never, never stop for screaming. the rest of your life. You're that girl who fucking just couldn't stop screaming. But you. The good news is, is she knew the lady. It wasn't like yeah. she worked for the morgue and it was just some stranger's dead body. Yeah. So it'd be like, if someone sat up, then it's you'd be like, like, Elaine, what is Elaine's it? Elaine's coming after me, <laughs> which is fine because she always has like nice cookies. To, That's right. You know. And really good gossip. Maybe right. she has one last right. bit of tea to spill. She wants that shampoo set done right. That's she doesn't right. want it flat in the back. My grandma used to have me spray my grandma every week for like since I for like the last 40 years of her life went to the what we called the shooty bop it wasn't the beauty shop we called it the shooty bop Mm. and got a shampoo set 
and in between during the week would make me spray it and also pluck out her chin hairs. Yeah. You know I mean, so <laughs> yeah, Thelma, come on. All right. So uh, we started doing unboxing videos um, for the fan cult. So basically we get sent these incredible, like crafty, interesting gifts from listeners and we're opening them on a camera. Like that's all it is. Yeah. You know, unboxing yeah, videos. It's fun. It's grad. Like, and then you can see all the shit we get because it's really fucking cool. And this is, we were trying to be a little tabloidy about the last one. So the last one we didn't wear makeup because right. it, we were just like, we're tired. We have to shoot this yeah. thing. Who cares? Let's just do it. Yeah. So you can get one of those. It looks like it's the National Enquirer where someone caught us at the gas station <laughs> with no makeup on and like, oh my God, they're such hags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so this one we got and we wanted to read the, le the letter from it because it's so lovely so okay it goes dear friends two years ago uh dana marie that's like her name two years ago dana marie uh would never write a letter like this or send a box like this anxiety has lied to me my entire life Con convinced me i had nothing to offer that my d ideas weren't valid my hard work in vain and my success temporary flukes I'm sure you hear this all the time, but it bears repeating. You three have changed my life. Steven, I think that's you and not Steven, Alice. Steven, you're in. Don't you're worry. in. You're in it. In November 2016, my friend suddenly asked me, do you like true crime stuff? And it just says in parentheses, yes, please. Mm -hmm. She told me to check the show out, and I binged the entire available catalog in just two days. Jesus. Whoa. Well, that was 2016, so it's not that bad. It was only four episodes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> she listened to one and was like, I don't really like this. And three days later, went back. I guess back. I'll keep. Uh, finding my people meant the world to me. They There were huge lessons being taught between the stories. The cases were interesting. But for me, it was everything else that really mattered. My dad and I were always the, quote, weird ones who bonded over the first 48 and forensic files. He passed uh, his copies of Stephen King to me as soon as he finished them. Quiet, measured, empathetic, inclusive, feminist, and animal loving. He was the person I felt most, I felt most got me in the entire world. I couldn't wait to go home in a few months and introduce him to the podcast because you know I'd need to do all the uh, techie stuff for him because dads. <laughs> so she couldn't just tell him about it. Of course. Right. In February 2017, he passed away suddenly, and among other things, I'm sorry I never got to share you with him because I know he would have loved you too. In the terribly, impossibly difficult time since I've lost him, I've worked very hard to honor his legacy, picking up on his reoccurring monthly donations to Planned Parenthood, ACLU, and St. Jude's, living each day as fully as I can and making a difference, thank saying thank you and I love you and shining my light, helping others to do the same. In November 2017, a full year to the day that I started listening to the show, I bought myself a single ticket to your show in Tampa. Mm. I was in town to run my first ever uh, run Disney 5K in honor of my dad. Disney World being another thing we shared a love of. That same morning and capping it off with an MFM show seemed necessary. Uh, it was a last minute decision that I tried talking myself out of, but I needed to do it and the stars aligned and I'd missed the Baltimore show and I could hear my dad's voice telling me not to put off the things that bring me joy. So I went by myself. And I sat next to the sweetest murderino who talked me back, who, who walked me back to my car with her boyfriend after the show, Aww. all caps, because active serial killer. Oh, that's right. When we were in Tampa. <laughs> when we were in Tampa, there was an active serial killer there. That's right. So on theme. Yeah. Thank you, Florida. <laughs> that day, no exaggeration, was a turning point in my life, doing things I wanted and needed to do and telling anxiety to fuck the hell off. Yes. My dad's birthday is next week, and it will be the second one we've had with Without him, I know I, w I will be a wreck, and I and have been looking for ways to pay it forward in advance. Maybe I could create a cloud of happiness to pad the empty space. So I wanted to say I love you guys. I love the work you do and the people you elevate. I love the incredibly transparent nature of your ongoing efforts with your mental health. I love how you support and appreciate. Uh, I love how supportive and appreciative you are of the community that has sprung up around you. I love that you don't feel I don't feel alone anymore. Wow. I could never adequately express my gratitude with words, but as an artist, I find it pretty easy to do visually. I hope you love everything. Apologies to George and Frank for invading their privacy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for everything sscgm love and light dana marie and her so she makes this art the, the, the shit she made for us 
is like next level like for the rest of my life i will fucking cherish this it's these like it they look like um what do you put on the praying candles what, like an altar like an you know like a yeah like we're saints but we all have our pets around us and they're really beautiful so go to at mighty pigeon underscore art on instagram to see all this stuff and also watch the unboxing video join the fan cult and watch the unboxing video exactly. so you can see what she sent us and, and you can see us lose our minds but yeah it's such beautiful stuff uh dana marie fucking like i can't believe she you know she needs to this needs to be her art for the rest of her life she's so talented like so incredibly talented well and the cool thing too is it, that story we hear that story so much in the vip line when we get to meet people after shows when they say i had two tickets my friend dropped out i wasn't gonna come i did it anyway i can't believe i'm here i met this person and that person we're <clears> back <throat> like you wait in the vip line and you end up talking to people and now we're friends and we actually work in the same industry or whatever the fuck yes like people because they're murdered in their own town they're meeting everybody yeah. basically and it's like this it's like a it's a it's a con for for those people in that town i see that like that and the the sipping uh what are they called sipping paint oh the, the the like yeah drink and paint wine and paint nights wine and whatever. paint nights yeah. there's like a bunch <laughs> I bet of it's called wine and paint night <laughs> yeah i was like sip and spin <laughs> well, that sort of thing <laughs> But a lot of people have these like they'll organize these like wine drink and paint nights and they'll paint and a thing from in, you know from the podcast and it's like just such a beautiful community of and people. raise money usually like they just did yes. they just did it and raised like 200 bucks in um they just tweeted it to us i can't remember what city it was do you remember steven for and the backlog <clears throat> it's like really incredible and they may, and they're like it's fun and like I, as someone who like can't just show up to a thing and like you're supposed to talk like the painting part is really cool yeah you have or a little have, job like, to do yeah they're like game nights at bars where they'll be like we're, we're playing my favorite murder bingo it's not just like you have to try to talk to people well and the people that are there like what we get excited about because it's people telling us about it and then we just pass on the word to the yeah. other people but it's you don't have to break ice you don't have to introduce yourself you don't have to fucking do anything because you're walking into a room full of people that are just like yeah. you in terms of anxiety in terms of wanting to be there despite th what their brain is doing to them right and that's how like we relate to that so much and it is so exciting because i can't tell you how often my brain is like stay home lay down you're the only up. one here who is uncomfortable right and everyone thinks like can tell you're uncomfortable like that's not true in fact it's the exact opposite that's what everyone's like, uncomfortable Dana marie saying my anxiety fucking lied to me yeah. it's 100 percent true that's all it does anxiety is a liar yeah. and it wants to quote unquote keep you safe which is keep you alone and isolate you so that you don't have anything happen to you because it's you don't as if yeah as if as if something bad's always going to happen to you and right. so when you can just just test that just do do some tests and that prove to yourself it's not true yeah and make some friends along the way i right. mean what and the fuck paint a fucking picture or whatever it was in a uh, woodenville washington was the latest paint night oh yeah it was awesome. all the elvises yes, yes that's Elvis right and skulls, yeah. Elvis with the skulls. they had themselves a time i want them to send them all to me and i want this see this blank wall in my fucking apartment no I'm i like, don't actually see a blank wall <laughs> Are you calling me a fucking shopaholic? <laughs> no, I just love that you're like you. You want them to send them all to. We should actually take a picture right now of what this loft looks like and the kind of but shit Georgia right has there. here. <laughs> is that a blank wall? It is, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you want to appear as insane as you possibly can? <laughs> hey, hey, look, it's your house. One hundred percent. It's your house. All right. Well, send us your stories, your weird shit. How did you almost get killed by your mom or dad? Uh, my favorite murder at gmail and thank thanks for all your gifts and thanks for these your lovely words and the way you guys all are there for each other it uh it makes us look real good <laughs> and stay sexy and don't get murdered goodbye Bye. elvis want a cookie good boy